Let's see who I piss off with this review. This is gonna be a good day. Avengers! So this will be a non-spoiler review and I will release a spoiler review very shortly after this one. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker stars Daisy Ridley, Adam Driver, John Boyega, and Oscar Isaac. And it's directed by J.J. Abrams and is the ninth and final film in the Skywalker saga. What, uh, what are you doing there, 3PO? Taking one last look, sir, at my friends. Confronting fear is the destiny of a Jedi. <laughs> the Force will be with you. Always. I want to preface this review by saying that I have been a Star Wars fan for as long as I can remember. I was introduced to it when I was little, and from there on out, I have been a huge fan. I knew there was going to be a lot going on in this movie. You're talking 40 plus years, and three trilogies, and nine movies. But unfortunately, you can't please everyone. So I tried my best to stay cautiously optimistic. This movie felt like a Star Wars movie from the beginning. The movie's constantly moving, the camera's constantly jumping from one thing to another, one story to the next. There's a score is constantly, almost constantly playing in the background when they're doing this adventure, the MacGuffin part where they're trying to find something to get to somewhere. And it was, but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was also really dark at times. And the atmosphere and the visuals of everything that you're seeing, it was really creepy. It's got those dark sinister blues and the way that you see certain shots, it doesn't feel like a Star Wars movie in that respect because it's really, really dark. Like borderline horror movie dark. I have been every voice you have ever heard inside your head. <laughs> Piss off, ghost! The cinematography and the visuals in this movie were outstanding. There were certain set pieces that these structures looked unbelievably huge. They just dwarfed people. They were like little itty bitty people. Size matters not. On the screen, it was ridiculous how big these structures seemed on these planets and these ships. It was just nuts. It was just nuts. The acting in this movie was excellent. Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver were outstanding. They did a perfect job with Carrie Fisher and Leia's character. I feel like they had a significant role for Leia in this last movie prior to Carrie Fisher's untimely death, but they did an amazing job of incorporating unused footage to feel organic so Leia's role would still have the same weight and the same effect, they actually pulled it off really, really well. John Boyega and Oscar Isaac were excellent, plus the new cast members. The whole cast was just really, really solid all around. Okay, I'm gonna get to the negatives. This movie is messy. Messy. It felt really rushed, especially in the first act. There is just a lot going on in this movie, a lot. I felt like this movie should at least be three hours long. It ended up clocking in at like the two and a half hour mark. And with that runtime, I mean, there are just a lot of missed opportunities. There's a lot of loose ends. There's certain things they left unexplained. And to be completely honest with you, something honestly does not seem right. With a movie of this magnitude, there should have at least been more time to wrap up things and they should have pulled out all the stops. I honestly feel like JJ was being held back. I can't really get into it because I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm sure at some point we will hear something. One critique I've heard is the reveal of the Emperor. You could make the case that the Emperor should have been revealed at the end of The Last Jedi. But then again, when they released the first trailer, you wouldn't have had reactions like this. Death Star? That's the dish!
People think that this movie retconned The Last Jedi, and I don't think that's the case. And you saw a lot of things in The Last Jedi come back around in this movie. You went straight to the dark. Could this trilogy have been more cohesive? Yes. But some people are acting like these movies have nothing to do with each other. Like, they're completely different. No! No different. Only different in your mind. You must unlearn what you have learned. Story structure was an issue, yeah, but they had effective character development for the most part, and they all deal with similar themes throughout all three movies. I really think J.J. Abrams did the best he could to tie in all three movies, given his constraints. And you're probably asking, what constraints? Marvel's doing extremely well, Disney in general is doing really, really well. Well, if you look at what's been reported, production issues and creative differences between producers and filmmakers has been a constant issue with Star Wars movies ever since Disney purchased the company and named Kathleen Kennedy in charge. So when there were reports of reshoots, multiple endings, and essentially up to four versions of The Rise of Skywalker, you can put two and two together to see what the issue is. I knew it, I'm surrounded by assholes. J.J. Abrams had three less months to work on The Rise of Skywalker than he did on The Force Awakens, maybe why it seems rushed. Even then, there were still reports of last minute reshoots and endings being changed and Kathleen Kennedy stating in an interview only a month before the release date that they were still trying to, quote, get things right, unquote. Only a month before the release date. Your behavior, Janessa, is continually unexpected. Now. It has been reported that even though Lucasfilm had an idea of where the story was going for certain characters, i.e. Rey, Kylo, apparently, in regards to the main story, each director, whoever they hired for that particular movie, had full creative control for their film. Huh? And there was no overall plan for this trilogy. That is a bad idea. I think so. So let me just throw some numbers at you. Do it. In 2018, the total value of the Star Wars franchise was estimated at a total of $65 billion and is currently the fifth highest grossing media franchise of all time. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money from the movie is made. You're talking billions of dollars in merchandise sales, box office, home video, video game sales, book sales, over millions of dollars in TV revenue. Thanks, Paul's the lunchbox. Thanks, Paul's the breakfast cereal. The Not to mention Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, the new Star Wars land in Disneyland and Disney World Resort, covers 28 acres and an estimated $2 billion total for both parks. And there was no overall plan for this trilogy. With that kind of money on the line? It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. That is just nuts. That's just crazy talk. That's a huge gamble. I'm okay with giving really talented directors a good portion of creative control, but there has to be some sort of common goal when you're setting up this sort of trilogy. Everybody has to be on the same page. The writers, the directors, the producers, the actors. I'm sure if you give them a majority of the creative control, as long as they're playing in a certain sandbox, you're fine. And I think it was just poor leadership. It's poor direction on their part. So I blame that on Kathleen Kennedy and the direction that they had or lack thereof. Because if you look at the Marvel movies, they all were leading up to no pun intended, an endgame. They had an endgame in sight. They thought long term and there was a plan. Marvel had like 20 movies. That was over a 10 year period. This was three movies. What are you doing? Like wh who's, whose call was that? The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. And Bob Iger, I gotta say, you gotta make sure you have the right people in the right positions. You can't just let people wing it, movie to movie paid $4.5 billion for this franchise, worth over $65 billion, fifth highest grossing franchise of all time. And nobody knows what the hell they're doing down there. You had paid the price for your lack of vision. Star Wars fans are complicated. I know. Being a Star Wars fan these days is a complicated profession. Then you got your diehards, you got your casual fans. Diehard Star Wars fans are really passionate and dedicated and it's because they care and I get that but you have certain fans that aren't necessarily diehards or casual fans but they're very very hard to please it's like how about a prequel trilogy with better lightsaber battles you all like JJ Abrams 
How about we get him to direct the first movie in a new trilogy? So what if we get Ryan Johnson to direct the second chapter in a new trilogy? So how about we get J.J. Abrams to direct the third movie in the trilogy, and we put everything that you've been saying that you've wanted, and we'll put it in the movie for you. You'll at least be happy with that, right? No? The relationship between these optimistic Star Wars fans and the hard to please Star Wars fans, it's like the notebook. Hit us, we're already fighting. Well, that's what we do, we fight. The optimistic fans are Ryan Gosling's character. You tell me when I'm being an arrogant son of a bitch and I tell you when you're being a pain in the ass, which you are 99% of the time. And the cynical Star Wars fans are like Rachel McAdams character. Arrogant son of a bitch. They have like a two second rebound rate and you're back doing the next pain in the ass thing. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? God damn it. What do you want? But to be fair, I don't blame the fans for being upset with how Kathleen Kennedy has handled the Star Wars franchise since taking over. I do not blame them. In saying that, these are not all terrible movies. Some people do like this trilogy and do like these movies. Actually, a lot of people do. But there's a good portion out there who will trash this movie and trash these trilogy movies just for the sake of doing it. Asshole. Major asshole. Is this trilogy perfect? No. It has some inconsistencies throughout all three movies. But to be fair, there were inconsistencies in the original trilogy as well. We just forget that. <sighs> Do you remember your mother? Your real mother? Just a little bit. What? Leia. Leia is my sister. My sister. It's you, Leia. I know. Somehow, I've always known. Good luck. <laughs> Somehow, I've always known. Just a sick world we live in! Sick people! You told me Vader betrayed and murdered my father. What I told you was true, from a certain point of view. A certain point of view? Ah, horseshit! Is it perfect? No, but is there still a way to enjoy these movies? Yes. I'm not saying to just accept whatever crap they put out there. The box office and total revenue numbers will determine whatever changes you wish you could enforce anyway. So you might as well just relax and take the good with the bad and try to find a way to enjoy these movies just as much as you find ways to hate them. You get a lot of this nowadays. It's just the way we communicate now on the internet. Back in the day, before the dark times, it wasn't that easy to spread that type of negativity. Who's the more foolish, the fool or the fool who follows him? Now, unfortunately, anger and cynicism, they get more views and more clicks, and it's more likely that when you go on the internet, you will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. You're going to see negative clickbait. You're going to see negative titles and people rant. Anger, fear, aggression, the dark side. Rather than saying how good something is, you know, negativity becomes toxic and it could spread when it's not always warranted. There's films that don't always resonate initially and need some more time to digest in order to appreciate what they're doing creatively and from a storytelling perspective. Case in point, Empire Strikes Back. People did not like Empire Strikes Back when it came out. Critics didn't like it, fans didn't like it. There's films that get better over time. And I think this trilogy over time will get better. There are some funny new characters in this movie. Dio is a great little droid addition, and Babu Frick is absolutely hilarious. Now these are fun characters, and for people who complain about them saying they're little kid stuff and it's whatever, that's Star Wars. That's always been Star Wars, since the beginning. You know, I asked my nephew, he's almost 10 years old, what he thought about the movie, and he loved it. He was telling me every little detail about every little thing he remembered from the movie. It was just really cool to see him so excited for a Star Wars movie. We don't look at Star Wars the same as we did when we were a kid because everything was different when we were a kid. You saw lightsaber battles and you were like, this is really cool. This is the best thing I've ever seen. For people who say, ah, it's not the same anymore. Star Wars isn't the same as it used to be. Of course it's not the same. You were a kid back then. You were a kid when those movies came out. Everything was different back then. The biggest thing you had to worry about was, what is mom and dad gonna make me for dinner? And where was I gonna go out and play today? That's your biggest concern. And your whole life ahead of you. You weren't your miserable, cynical self as you get older. We've forgotten how to tap into our imagination and just enjoy these Star Wars movies like we did when we were a kid.
this movie is for Star Wars fans, but it's for young Star Wars fans too. So just try to remember how these movies were to you when you were younger. Try to take your adult self out of it. Try to have fun with these movies. It's okay to look at them with a critical eye. It's okay to become smarter fans as we get older, but let's just pump the brakes a little bit. Remember, concentrate on the moment. Feel, don't think. So overall, is Rise of Skywalker a good movie? Yes. Is it a great movie? No, probably not. I feel like there's a cut of this movie out there that would have been rated higher, but as for the version that I saw in the theaters, I'm going to give it about three out of five Baby Yodas. How about that? It's fun, it's entertaining, it's funny, it's dark and scary, and there's a lot of adventure. I had to see it again. There, there's so much in this movie. It's a lot of movie. It's a lot of movie. I gotta say, I think it's more fun and entertaining than The Last Jedi, but The Last Jedi is a better movie overall. I think it's on par with The Force Awakens as far as the sense of adventure and just pace and the tone. I mean, I had a lot of fun watching this movie, and that's what it's all about. But this being the final movie of this particular Skywalker saga, there were certain things I personally wanted to see and I didn't see them. And it was a little disappointing, but did it ruin the movie for me? No. I think if you were to look at this trilogy as a whole, I think they established their characters and the story in the first movie. And in the second movie, you had some dark tones. There was a lot of character growth and really kept you guessing. I think this trilogy chose to focus more on characters and emotion than anything else. I think the trilogy could have been better and more cohesive. I really think J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson did the best they could, given their constraints, to tell their own stories while keeping them connected somewhat, all the while satisfying the producers at Lucasfilm and Disney. I think it's better than people think. I really do. I know people are going to disagree with me and that's okay. You don't have to agree with everyone. It's, a trap. it's okay to not like this movie. It's okay to not like this trilogy. It's okay. It's a trap. And it's okay to like it. You shouldn't feel like you're not a Star Wars fan for liking Last Jedi. You shouldn't feel like you're not a Star Wars fan for liking Rise of Skywalker or not liking Rise of Skywalker. You can like or dislike both. It's okay. I wish that was so. Unfortunately, you can't please everyone. And you're going to drive yourself crazy just trying to meet everyone's ridiculously high, crazy ass expectations there are probably still going to be people out there who just are going to have a problem with it no matter what. So you might as well make the movie that you want because you're not going to please everyone. Keep firing, assholes! Okay, that's my take on Rise of Skywalker, at least my first impressions. So if you like this video and you like movies in general, subscribe to the channel to get notifications on all my upcoming content, and I will see you in the next one. May the force be with you.